Good morning, Hobby King. Um, my name is Nigel Rollison, and I've been flying radio controlled model aircraft for over 30 years, including many gliders, slope soarers, power models. Um, I'm also a club secretary and BMFA approved instructor. This is the Hobby King Dynamic S glider without a motor. Um, it flew very well. Very pleased with it. Uh, good flying performance. I added extra orange to it to improve its visibility in core light conditions and cloudy conditions. Um, I use Spectrum DX7 transmitter with an AR500 receiver with the long receiver aerial protruding through the top of the fuselage uh, in a piece of plastic tubing. Uh, to give better uh, signal propagation. Uh, it is all powered uh, with an Overlander 1600 milliamp hour three cell battery and um, the original 30 amp speed controller uh, we changed to a Turnigy 40 amp speed controller because the motor was pulling almost 30 amps on the standard propeller setup. So for safety reasons we use the 40 amp speed controller. So uh, all went very well, uh, good, very good climb performance, vertical climb performance, good aerobatics, inverted flights and bumps were very good indeed. And uh, winds when we flew this uh, the other Sunday were about 15 mile an hour winds and I was flying um, Cubanates and reverse Cubanates at the time and suddenly the motor burst off the front of the plane and uh, disappeared into an area of very dense, very prickly gorse and heather. And despite looking for, three of us looking for a whole morning, uh, impossible to find, absolutely impossible. The plane came into land by using lots of down elevator with everything hanging out the front of the plane on the battery eliminator cable from the receiver. Uh, this cable, uh, the three wire back cable is taped to the inside of the fuselage with blender and hinge tape. Uh, so that's why it stayed plugged into the receiver. And uh, all is still working very well. Uh, hence I was able to land it reasonably successfully without further damage. And uh, the ailerons and rudder mixed in with the elevator. And, uh, the elevators, I decided with my experience of previous models, the elevators had too much movement and the servos were loaded too much on the outer position. So the control fittings are on the centre position of each small servo at the back. Um, this has presented no problems at all, bunts, dives, I've always got full rudder, a full elevator and rudder authority. So the rudder authority yours very well and very flat. So four point rolls and knife edges were, were quite good. So enough of that, let's depower that and make that safe. So with the front coming off, what we what I noticed with this after we you know, really looked at it, the plywood supporting plate was broken off. Only two little tiny bits left there, so this plate is not adequate for the job, for support. Uh, it needs a smaller hole in the front area. And also there's a square channel in the front, similar to the same size as square channel that has the carbon fibre tube at the back. So the, I'm going to add a hard piece of hardwood in the front to go forwards to which I can screw the bottom side of the new nose cone which I will fit. I ordered a brand new fuselage but you know, can't complain about the price from Hobby King. Delivery was very quick indeed from the UK warehouse and I thought I wonder how well the new front is glued on. So I grabbed hold of it firmly, gave it a couple of twists and pulled the front off. I found that the glue holding the front on, there was a dab there a dab there and a dab underneath. Not sufficient to hold a powerful electric motor, as I found. 
and uh, so that's not adequate at all and you can see the channel in the front there and I can by putting one of these on I'll rebuild the front with fresh EPO foam and epoxy I will add the channel the support strengthener in the bottom and put two screws underneath to hold it on more firmly and also I'll fit a make a new plywood piece with a smaller hole in the front to give, um, to give positive support, sideways support and torsional support for the new nose piece. Um, although you can buy brand new canopies, new canopies are available and they fit very well, sometimes too well, that's it. Um, you can't buy the separate nose pan. There is the complete kit. And you, the new nose piece, you can see, has a too large a hole in the front, so it's not strong at all. A further thing with the new fuselage, if you look very carefully at it, I'm looking down the front of the fuselage, and the rear end from here is bent sideways. Turn it the other way, I'm looking down the front of the lens, and you can see this is off sideways, that way. This is bent 15 to 20 millimetres bent fuselage. And because of the exceptionally good carbon fibre in the sides, you cannot bend it straight again. So this will always be a bent fuselage which will require rudder correction all the time. Not good. So I would like to, I read on the internet that you're doing a competition for dynamic S gliders. So as they are, I wonder how many are going to lose their motors or if modifications are going to be permitted uh, within the um, under competition conditions. Um, this is my first foam glider. All my other gliders are a built up construction. Ridge racers, wild fleckens, this is going back a while and I've still got them and still flying them. So will this be my last foam glider? I'm going to repair it and carry on flying it. Uh, but I wonder, can Hobby King help me to do this? Um, 